where's the edge for you man where's the edge where's like you know you've you've solved so many problems and you're continually you know creating ways in which you can break down these false constructs that hold people back is there is there is it more challenging to do it with self or do you do that with the same kind of um clarity and and you know kind of impartiality that you can do for others and where's the edge and where's this where's this where do you stumble when it when it turns inward um it's definitely not i would say it's not as clear i mean it's obviously much easier to look at other people when i get caught in my own narratives like i've gotten to a point now where i've learned to listen and this is why you know i'm being hard on you because i just hold you to a high standard but <laughs> like if you could listen a little bit more acutely to what's actually happening listening is a it's an essence it's not necessarily the words i'm saying it's like listening is a form of relationship right like being with life so I would say that's one of my superpowers is listening. So that also then translates into my own conversation. So I become a good listener of the thoughts, which can still be, you know, at times sort of a little bit derogatory or fear-based if something's happening that I don't like. But then I listen. And then what does that what does that conversation call for? Right. So if I'm feeling a little scared, what's that called for? It's it's asking for reassurance. And then I bring that, you know, if there's a bit of uncertainty, what's it looking for? It's looking for some sort of security and I'll bring that. So um, I, I'm, I'm a work in progress, you know, I'm not walking on water just yet. You know, it's mm -hmm. like there's a ways to go. <laughs> so yeah, and, and, and honestly, I feel so grateful because it's like people like yourself and clients that I work with and groups that I speak to where... I didn't know what we we're going to talk about today. I really didn't know that we we're going to talk about your uncle and that there's going to be this beautiful emotional yeah. release. Like, so I'm a beneficiary of the unfolding of life itself where I get to reinforce my own distinctions, my own revelations, my own insights just through the, the courage and the vulnerability and the authenticity of people sharing what they're going through. So um, that's where I get most of my work done is really just being a space of love and presence for people and seeing in them the little child in me that also could have that same tendency towards being scared or lonely it's okay you know it's mm. okay i've just made more space for all of my little idiosyncrasies right you know one of the the moniker the moniker you carry is architect and you know in that there's a certain mathematical element and it reminds me of a mathematician that has a big problem like mm -hmm. a big puzzle that they're looking to solve something that's on the chalkboard that they're looking yeah. to find the right formula for yeah. is there anything that you're pondering and trying to understand now of benefit to self or others or your clients is there anything that's like on the edge that you really or a recent discovery or something that's still on the chalkboard where you got the formula but you haven't quite solved it mm -hmm. yet is there anything that you can think of that's like that is COVID actually real? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a great question. I think I'm always in the process of, analysis is a strong word, it sounds tiring and it's not tiring for me, it's really joyous. It's like I'm a mad scientist in terms of exploration. So there's no one specific thing. I just really am fascinated by this dimension, this paradigm that we're all in. And the way I look at it, as I said, it's really revelatory, meaning that we come here because we have our baggage, we have our fears, we have our constraints. And so the formula that I feel is the most powerful that I've ever seen is that life is going to present you with people and circumstances to reveal where you're not free is my mm. quote that, you know, is now one of the most readily used out there, which is, you know, that's that's certainly lovely to see people sharing it but that to me is the formula for awakening it's like mm -hmm. okay where can i discover some sense of unrest or dis-ease where i get triggered i get upset and in rather than trying to control circumstances mitigate or dismiss or withdraw or the different ways that we survive that can i dive right into it and go wow Let's be let's be fascinated by the fact that I've got upset by something because that is in direct juxtaposition to my ability to truly be powerful and free regardless of circumstance. That that's that sweet spot right there is okay, rather than trying to deny experience or try to control circumstance, where can I actually reveal internal constraint and be the architect of my own liberation right so 
Yeah, that's that's my constant edge with others. And when it arises within myself, obviously, uh, I've done a ton of work to get me to where I'm at. But like, that's not to say that things start, you know, going to show up in my quote unquote future that I can't predict. That might be going, oh, like you know, I got like upset, yeah. surprised, a new a new corner of the world in which yeah. you're not free. Yeah, and that's where again, why I'm so happy that you could at least embrace me taking you from knowing hypothetically what's going to happen to no you don't know you don't know i mean i don't want to be like like macabre but like you might not make it for 10 you might be in a freaking car accident you know it's like we don't know but if you lived in that fear you'd you'd have a lot more concern right like oh you're only going to live for three three more years or whatever it is like the what's the consistent you got a conversation in your head that's giving you an experience. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's all hypothetical, which is why the I don't mind, don't know mind. And I think I told that story. The thing that got me to where I am today is those three words of I don't know. I just mm-hmm. don't know, mm-hmm. which is amazing that people pay me a fortune to work with me. And I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> They're like, wow, this guy's great. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's so- freeing joyous joyous self-reflection is yeah. one of your one of your your great practices what are the other personal <clears throat> practices that you engage in is there a meditation practice is there a, you know some kind of spiritual practice or another practice that you use to support yourself yeah. through your process i think most of my practices are really just to do with taking care of my equipment you know so the the traditional like sleep exercise good sunlight you know mm-hmm. uh, good quality food supplementation where required i think yeah, if we go back to the metaphor of the car i was using like if you want to have a good ride in life you know you've got to take care of your tire pressure and your oil sure. and, right and so it's like taking care of my equipment i my former career was more in physical transformation as a trainer and a yoga instructor and pilates instructor so i've got that fortune as a foundation upon which i can pull to like just take care of like my gear you know yeah. and i think anybody can relate to if i haven't slept very well i'm not going to have the same degree of articulation i'm going to have the same degree of precision so like take care of the basics make sure that the equipment is all you know it's done its annual and it's mm-hmm. all good and then then you have a, a a much stronger chance of like having a a a mental and emotional immunity to life right i think there's physical immunity that's obviously topic du jour right now but i think there's something to be said for psychological immunity there's something to be said for the fact that i am immune to circumstance in the way that i don't get diseased by what's going on out there right so the two to me are inseparable mind body connection it's not really mind body connection it's just different forms of density and so one informs the other if i feel inspired mentally or emotionally because i've fallen in love or i got a good opportunity you're generally going to have a lot more energy in your body and you're going to feel more vital if i equally have a great workout or i got some good sleep or i ate some great food then that equally is going to imprint on the psychology so i think taking care of equipment on both sides so that's my practice is just to and actually i'm working on a program for, to help people with that more on the physical too so. yeah no doubt i mean uh <clears throat> when you're sick or when you're tired or I yeah mean, and it's, it's one of the reasons why i wrote own the day is the first book like the foundation is the body and it's yeah. actually quite a bit simpler in many ways than the than the mind mm-hmm. you know because it's a it's a somewhat the density is is there so it's slower in some ways like yeah. it takes a long time to lose you know 100 pounds or whatever you want to do but you yeah. can change your mind in a moment like i changed my mind today i'm you not the lost same a lot of weight I, exactly <laughs> that, that can happen in the psyche fast in the body but it's also it's very you know there's a formula that's that's that makes a lot of sense for the body yeah. uh so yeah it's a, it's really good advice i think uh you know one of the last things i want to ask you is yeah what are your thoughts on you know a journaling practice you know is this something that you really recommend is this something you do yourself and what are like the productive ways to go through this you know self-reflection through writing versus thought and like yeah. journaling prompts that can help people get you know, access to some of the some of the questions and conversations that they may be blind to. I think it's very beneficial, especially when people don't have access to like a Peter Crone or somebody who can reflect for them, right? So to have self-reflection, I think anything that creates space, right? So meaning if you're in a conversation in your head about something that's, you know, disturbing you, creating some sort of anxiety, then if you can articulate it onto paper, it's almost like through the version of like being a third party observer of your own conversation, you get some sort of perspective, right? Mm -hmm. So I think journaling, 
I think it's twofold. One, it creates space. And two, journaling is very self-expressive. And by that, I mean, it's like prayer, right? When I was looking at the energy of prayer and really like meditating on that, why is prayer powerful? It's not so much that, you know, whether there is some response on the other side or it does elicit some sort of like goodwill because you're asking for guidance. That may well happen. And that's in the realm of whatever you want to believe. But it does, to me, speak to the freedom to express what's really there. And that's love, right? Because if you think about it in everyday life, when you're in front of your wife, your husband, your father, your mother, your boss, you know, invariably, depending on the quality of the relationship, and as I said, most relationships struggle a little bit because people aren't free, but you are in some degree inhibited in your self-expression. Right, because you don't want to upset someone, whether it's sort of more philanthropic, oh, I don't want to upset them, or it's more, I don't want to upset them because I don't want to get in trouble, which is more self-preservation. Either way, I'm not just fully self-expressed. Like a kid will go up to someone at a party and go, why are you fat? <laughs> right, mm. like the kid doesn't know yet that that's an inappropriate thing to say, or, mm -hmm. you know, oh, you're ugly. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> right, there's just this beautiful thing about a child that it's, it's actually, it is, it elicits the response we're having because right. it's, it's, it's liberating, it's joyous, like that you could just be that fucking honest, right? <laughs> so I think the energy of journaling and prayer are synonymous in that regard because you're in your own conversation where you don't feel inhibited in the ability to talk about what's close to the heart. And so that itself is, uh, it's a form of liberation just by the fact that you're acknowledging what's really going on. And I think people are just so thwarted in their self-expression. They're so intimidated. They want to be right. They want to be polite. They don't want to offend. They don't want inconvenience. Oh, no, 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 no. Or even when someone gives you a compliment, right? Like how many people like deny that? They dismiss Deflect it. it. Yeah. yeah. And so I think the more we can get good at just being comfortable on our own skin and yeah, like I feel this way and that's what's like, it's love holding the humanity that I am. And so journaling and prayer, I think, are just exercises in that. Ultimately, I would love and I help people get to the place where you can have that with a partner. You can have it with a loved one. Ideally, you can even have it in a corporate environment if it's done under the right guise of like, you know, we, we honor self-expression here. Um, so that, that's powerful. That's intimacy. That's affinity to me. That's where I'm truly... You know, that's the expression of namaste, right? Like it's yeah. like the, the divine in me sees the divine in you. And in the midst of that is our humanity and we make space for it. And to be mindful of the, the dramaturgy that we might be playing out in our journals or in our prayers. If we're praying to be the pious one and mm -hmm. reflecting back to self, oh, this is me being pious and I'm going to pray in this certain way because it makes me feel this way about myself. That's worthless. Yeah. You know, that doesn't help anything. That's, you know, Small self righteousness. Right. And then, same in the journal. If you're journaling to reaffirm your rightness or reaffirm your, or any other reason other than just the radical open self expression, like these are sacred places, yeah. sacred spaces in your mind, your commune with the divine, however you want it, or in your journal is a sacred space as well. And which is why, you know, one of the great violations that, you know someone can do is when a parent goes and a dad goes and reads his, his daughter's journal yeah you know like you don't understand the violation of that because now every time she's in that journal yeah. she's wondering do i need to censor my thoughts just in case my dad breaks into my room right. and busts open this journal you've just actually severed the communication between her truest deepest self and that's yeah. something that for everybody there whether you're in partnership or whether you know no matter how much that draws you towards it because of your curiosity or your desire to control whatever fucking you know thing you got going on like mm -hmm. respecting the sanctity of that within self and within others like that's uh it's a sacred place yeah it's it's again i just use the word love because it's you know it's allowing it's granting beingness, which might be a weird expression. Like I'm granting the space for me to be what I'm being and it's mm -hmm. okay. Like that to me is to the quintessential parent is who makes space. And sadly, there's not that many, you know, we're, we're all works in progress and I can't speak to parenting. I know it's difficult, but the quintessential parent is granting beingness to their child. The child's doing their best. If they, you know, if I went to go and hug you and I knocked the mug over and you're the parent who gets upset, 
you didn't allow the fact that this kid is still developing like the awareness of their central nervous system and how their limbs move in space like to get upset only now creates more tension in that child the absence of feeling accepted for who they are in the process of their own evolution so if we can bring that to ourselves to others that's a totally different planet where we allow people to just be works in progress. You know, no one's perfect, myself included. We are all developing, hopefully, but within the context of love, that development is, is unthwarted. It's not in any way built around a brick wall of shame or guilt or fear. Um, that, that's, that's my commitment, is bring more love so that people can F up and be who they are and it's okay. We love you exactly the way you are. And if you're committed to something else, I'll support you in that too. Amen to that.